What's up everyone, photographer Ronix for Money Photography and today we're going to be doing a retouching tutorial and this is going to be like a full retouching tutorial for this very image and before I can go ahead, I took this image some days back and I, I used the Canon uh, EOS 6D camera and I used an 85mm lens I shot this image at f1.8 at 1 out of a thousand of a second and at ISO 125 so as you can see this image, uh, the, the apertures I used, uh, it was really, really a deep aperture and you can see how it managed to blur out most of uh, the background. So let's click in and we start editing this image. So we're going to be doing frequency separation and let's uh, do some little bit of adjustments right here. As you can see, this is a raw image and as usual, I prefer to first of all get, come to camera calibration because I want to get back the, the real colors for this very image the way they were in my camera screen so i'm going to come and usually i shoot in a adobe camera landscape so i'll come right here to landscape so when i click on it i'll get back most of the camera uh colors so this is how initial i was looking at the image on my camera screen so i'm going to come and do a little bit of adjustments in the basic panel so I prefer to knock down the highlights for this image, you can see. And I'm going to also knock down the whites. And I'm going to knock down the blacks a little bit. So I'm going to put a little bit of contrast to this image to around 6. And I'm going to pull up the shadows a little bit to around 23. I think this is fine. So what, what we're going to do right now, we're going to open the image in uh, Photoshop. So just click open and the image is going to be opened into photoshop so you're going to be learning about the amazing frequency separation technique for skin retouching in photoshop and you're going to do this without skipping any single step in photoshop so this is our image right here in photoshop so first of all i prefer to first of all crop the image in a ratio of 4 to 5 or 8 by 10 because i want the image to fit in the full screen for instagram that's why I crop it in this ratio. So I'm going to move it and uh, crop it because I want uh, most of uh, the attention to be on this beautiful model's face. As you can see, this was an outdoor image. And for a lighting setup, I used a Godox AD600 and I used a reflector underneath right here. So I'm going to crop it like in this ratio, right? As you can see, since I was shooting at f1.8, I lost the focus on the nose and it is kind of out of focus. But regardless, we're going to be retouching this image. So I'm going to come right now and I'm going to be doing frequency separation. So basically, frequency separation is a skin retouching technique that divides the image into two. That is the high and the low frequencies. So the high frequency contains the uh, textures of the skin and the low frequency usually contains uh, the skin tones and the colors for the image so basically that is frequency separation for you so you're going to come and reduplicate the background layer twice by clicking ctrl j or command j twice command j or ctrl j twice or you can just drag and drop right here to create those two layers so i'm going to delete that layer so remember uh, the middle layer is usually our color or some people prefer to call it a uh, low frequency because uh, the colors are usually below and the textures are usually on top so and for the upper layer we're going to name it uh, texture or we can name it a uh, high frequency so whichever you come across really works for you so you shouldn't uh, be shocked when you come across these two terms so they don't matter as long as you know which layer is always in the middle so we're going to deactivate the texture layer and come to the color all of frequency layer then you're going to come right here to filter sorry come right here to filter and come to blur and come to gaussian blur so when you click on gaussian blur remember we only want to retain uh the colors for this color layer in this image so uh we're going to zoom out a little bit and, and look for the area that seems to have more textures than the rest of the skin like the forehead right here has more texture so we're going to slide until we can see less of the textures on this particular area so let's uh, move this slide until you're seeing 
a list of uh, the skin textures but we can still see the rest of uh, the facial details for this model so at around 9.0 we are fine with that so click ok so as you can see right now we only have uh, the skin uh, the colors or the skin tones in this image but we can't see the textures quite well so what you're going to do right now you're going to uh, select uh, the texture or high frequency layer and activate it and make sure it is selected so we're going to come right here and uh, for this layer we are going to only remain with the textures for this layer so we're going to come to image and we're going to come to apply image so when you come apply image uh, this is what you'll get so remember we're going to be subtracting the textures from this layer so we're going to come and first of all change the blending mode to subtract so when you click on subtract this is what your image will turn you to automatically create this gray kind of layer for you so remember we are subtracting the textures from the color layer so we're going to come to layer and we're going to click on the layer that you, that we are going to sub, uh, subtract the textures from so click on the color layer so when you do this uh, make sure your pass is at 100 and the scale is 2 and the offset 128 so make sure if that is not marked or checked and these two boxes are also not checked so when you click ok i uh, will get your textures on this layer you can see right now we only have textures on this gray kind of layer but we don't have colors and skin tones in this layer so what you're going to do you're going to come to the blending come to uh, to the blending option and uh, look for linear light so when you click on linear light you have gotten back as the image the way it was before so we're going to put these two layers in a group select the two layers or click command and click on the uh, both layers and click ctrl g to group them or you can just select them and just drag and drop on this group icon to put them in a group so we're going to name this group frequency uh, frequency separation so I think we are uh, we are done with that. So uh, you can activate or deactivate this to see if at all you successfully separated the image. So there shouldn't be a difference between these two layers. So I think we are done with uh, creating the frequency separation um, group. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to first of all uh, blend uh, this uneven skin tones in this image and you're going to be using the amazing mix, mixture brush tool in Photoshop so as usual we want to see those areas that are having a uh, harsh uh, skin tone transitions in this image so that we can blend them together and uh, create uniform skin tone transitions so click on the texture layer and just come to the adjustments and I'll uh, create a black and white layer on top of uh, the, uh, the texture layer so as you can see the image has not totally become uh, it has totally turned into black and red so we're going to darken it more by turning down the red channel i think that we can see the areas that don't have uh, even skin tone transitions uh, for this image so select your color all of frequency layer remember we are going to be uh, harmonizing the skin tones for the, this image so remember the skin tones are usually on the low frequency or the color layer come under the brush, brushes and right click and look for a mixer brush tool and if you don't have it I'm um, using an older version of Photoshop that is CC 2017 so my mixer brush tool is right here so you right click and get your mixer brush tool and for the settings make sure it is a clean brush so drop down right here and make sure it is a clean one make sure this right here is uh, checked or selected because we want the uh, the brush to clean each cell after each and every stroke so for the wetness we're going to be using the wetness of nine percent as the load 75 and the mix 90 percent and the flow 100 make sure sample all layers is not checked or marked because we only want to be working on this layer alone so you have your mixer brush tool and you're going to be blending uh, those areas and make sure when you're doing this make sure you don't totally zoom into your image because we want to mix or blend at uh, these uneven skin tones the way someone is going to be looking at the image so let's start 
blending and if at all you want to increase on the size of your mixer brush you should use the left and the right brackets on the keyboard so let's blend and make sure when you're blending make sure you mi uh, blend or mix the highlights alone the mid tones alone and the shadows alone so let's uh, blend uh, these uneven skin transitions skin tone transitions and make sure you don't over mix a particular area for a long time because you'll be applying a uh, this wetness twice on that particular area so we wouldn't want to have uh, a plastic image that is lacking skin texture so mix a, uh, an area for a short short time so uh, right now what we're doing we are kind of uh, blending the unevenness in the skin tones for this outdoor image so let's uh, blend this so I think we are done with uh, the top areas and as you can see I prefer to I remove my blem uh, the blemishes last for all the images I've been retouching because uh, when using this mixer brush tool it tends to uh, flatten uh, the blemishes so when you reach the time for removing the blemishes uh, you tend to do less of uh, the work regarding uh, blemish removal so that's why I prefer to remove uh, the blemishes last after doing my skin retouching so you're going to come to uh, don't worry if at all you skip out some particular areas because uh, when you come and you're going to refine those areas I'm going to be showing you guys this in a bit so come to the neck area and I know most people tend to uh, forget the neck area every time they are doing their retouching so let's also fine tune the neck area I think we are done with that so let's uh, also blend the fingers or the arm of the model uh, to get rid of uh, this dark darkness right here on the knuckles so let's uh, do this using the power uh, this mixer brush tool and you know this mixer brush tool is really really nice and magical because uh, it uh, does everything for us so that when we reach uh, the next step for uh, fine tuning this image I will have less work to do so let's zoom out because I wouldn't want to mess up the image so let's turn off the black and white layer to see our progress so far so this is before after before after you can see what we have just done with the mixer brush tool so right now what we're going to do we're going to be fine tuning uh, this image using the second frequency separation method that is uh, the one for using the lasso tool in Photoshop so let's delete the black and white layer by dragging it to the holding it down down and uh, putting it in the trash icon to delete it because we no longer need it right now so make sure you're still on the color all of frequency layer get your lasso tool so this is the lasso tool and make sure your feathering is around 21 pixels so we're going to zoom in now uh, completely to uh, the area of the skin because we want to fine tune the areas we may have missed out when we are using the mixer brush tool so just select make a selection on only and only uh, the area of uh, the skin of uh, the model so make sure you resist from uh, selecting the eyebrows and other facial structures like the hair so we have made a selection on this area of the skin so we're going to come back to filter and we're going to come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So it is going to bring back uh, the radius we used when we are creating our frequency separation group. So what we are going to do right now, we are going to uh, slide this until we are seeing uh, the best skin textures for uh, this very image. So we're going to slide this. So let's uh, slide this until we get uh, the best skin texture for uh, this very image so you have to slide while you're looking at uh, this image so remember we started like at nine uh, we started at, at around nine pixels so remember we, we are now going to slide this until we see uh, the best skin textures for uh, this image so I think at around we are fine at around 29 at a radius of 29 remember 
we now have uh, the skin textures in this image but uh, the image is not looking really really so so plastic and yeah you just click ok and, uh, and apply the effect on the rest of uh, the skin but let me show you the trick for getting uh, the perfect uh, skin texture for the image so remember we started with the radius of 9 so what I found out of recent and I've been sharing this with you guys in for those who have been following my tutorials in most of the tutorials uh, this method I found out uh, the radius used when you're creating this frequency separation group uh, when you multiply it by 3 and add 2 to that value uh, you get uh, the best skin textures for your images so for uh, for this image we use the radius of 9 when we are creating the frequency separation uh, group so for this uh, radius just multiply 9 times 3 and add 2 to that value so for this case 9 multiply 9 by 3 you get around 27 and add 2 to the value so you will get 29 so when I put 29 you can see I have uh, the best skin texture for this image so I'm just going to click OK and deselect by clicking uh, the space or you can just right click and deselect so we are going to be applying that effect on the rest of uh, the model skin so make a shape according to the shape you're trying to select so right click and click on Gaussian blur so we're going to apply it on the rest of uh, the model skin so right click and apply the effect on uh, the skin as you see I'm making these shapes according to uh, that the shape of that particular area I'm trying to apply the effect on so come to the middle of the eyebrows and also up right click apply that and if at all you feel uh, the effect is too much for your liking like I'm going to show you right now on this particular area of the nose so right click and apply Gaussian blur and if at all you feel it is too much click shift control F so just it will bring this option for fading or reducing on the effect of the Gaussian blur on that area so that is how you reduce on the effect so just come and uh, do this for your image so right click and apply the effect and for what I've realized, most people when they are doing frequency separation and they come to, for example, this highlight right here, they right click and apply the effect and you can see the nose has lost uh, the highlights of this particular area and kind of looks flat. So produce on this effect, if at all you want to apply it on this highlight too, just come and click shift Control F and uh, reduce on the effect get back those beautiful highlights on the nose area so that is how you reduce uh, the effect of uh, the Gaussian blur on that particular area so well, let's zoom in so that we have a precise uh, selection and apply the effect on the rest of uh, the facial areas and if you're watching and haven't subscribed kindly subscribe this channel because I will keep on uh, creating uh, content about retouching and soon we are going to be doing uh behind the scenes videos for studio and outdoor photography so make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on those amazing tips for your photography and yeah they will definitely improve on your photography skills both indoor and outdoor so make sure you subscribe and don't forget to turn on turn on the the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on uh, the new content you're going to be uploading uh, regarding uh, behind the scenes and uh, photography and retouching so let's uh, apply it on even the fingers because we want to get rid of the darkness on these particular areas like on the knuckles as you're seeing I'm just selecting each and every individual finger separately because I wouldn't want to select all of them at a go because I want are the best selections on those particular areas so let's come to the knuckles and apply as uh, the effect right there as you can see we have really done a pretty nice job uh, with african separation so let's uh do this 
I see the before and after for the frequency separation. So before, after, before, after, you can see uh, what a beautiful job we have done. So let's do the blemish removal. And for blemish removal, I'm going to be using uh, the spot healing brush tool. Yeah, and the clone stamp tool. So make sure you select your texture or high frequency layer because uh, this is where all your textures are. So remember, you're going to be dealing with the textures when you're removing uh, the blemishes. So just come and just dab over the blemish you want to eliminate or get rid of. So let me do this quickly because we want to go to the eye and teeth whitening and the color grading for this image after removing these blemishes. Yeah, and the model really had the skin is really, really okay. So let's do this. I remove all the blemishes quick so that we can rush into uh, the other step for color grading this beautiful and amazing portrait and yeah let's do this quick because I feel like I'm doing so much of the talking and kind of losing out on the concentration for uh, retouching this image I think we are done I was removing the blemishes, so this is the before, after, before, after. You can see uh, how amazing this image has been retouched. So let's do some little bit of uh, blemish removal right and close to the eyes and right here. So you can take your time when you're removing these blemishes. I think we are done with that. So before, after, before, after. So let's come to uh, the color grading for this image. So Remember, color grading, I prefer to use uh, the selective color. So I'll just come here and get to my selective color. So I want to warm up this image a little bit. So I'm going to come and first of all, put my science to around negative three and warm it up by turning up uh, the yellows for this image to around nine. You can see I'm turning up the yellows in the red. So I'll come to the black channel because I want to darken the hair a little bit more. I'm going to put it around two. So you can see before, after, so far for this image. You can see before and after. So what I'm going to do right now, I want to uh, reduce on the intensity of the whites right here on the forehead. So I'm going to come to uh, the whites in selective color and I'm going to pump them up so you can see when you turn them all the way up you lose out you can add a glow or reduce it uh, for this image so I just want to reduce on the whites in this image to around 10 so I think we are done with that so I'm going to do the rest of uh, the color grading in camera row so let's go to camera row right now by creating a stamp visible layer for all we have done by clicking shift alternate control e on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer so it is shift control alternate e on the keyboard that's the shortcut for creating this layer then click control j on the keyboard to duplicate it so come to filter and come to camera row filter so we're going to be doing uh, eye whitening and teeth whitening and so much of the color grading in camera row so this is where we are right now. So we're going to come to camera calibration and we're going to play around with these sliders until we get uh, the best skin color for the model. So it depends on the look you're going in for. So we're going to come to the red primary and uh, see if at all it works uh, for us. So we're going to leave that. So again, we're going to come to uh, the green primary and I look for what works for us so negative seven and you're going to come to the blue primary and I look for what really works best for us and uh, we're going to uh, go with around nine you can see that and now let's uh, reduce on uh, maybe the saturation of the reds for this image I think that is beautiful so what you're going to do right now we're going to be doing uh, a little bit of uh, let's uh, warm up this image a little bit to add so yellows to this image around two. So what we are going to do right now, we are going to uh, be 
we're going to be doing the eye whitening for this image and before we can do that let's come right to our hue and saturation so that we can play around with the greens if at all you really want to do that so you're on the hues and you're going to play around with the green so come and uh you can play around uh, with the greens for this image so i think i prefer this look because it puts all it brings out all my attention for this image you can see if at all you slide this to the left you get that autumn kind of look so it depends on the look you're trying to go in for so i'm going to leave it at that and you can as well come and play around with uh, the yellows in your image so i think i'll go in with around 25 for this beautiful image so you can as well come and play around with uh, the oranges if at all you really want to so i'm going to leave it at around uh, negative six then you can as well come to uh, the reds and play around with them to get the look you're trying to go in for so i'm going to leave it at around six so I think we are done with the color grading. So let's go in for the eye whitening. So click on your mix um, adjustment brush. It has about the mixer brush. So when you get your adjustment brush, or you can just click K on the keyboard. That's the shortcut. Uh, to select your mixer brush tool. And these are the settings for the brush tool we have just selected. So make sure the temperature is around. I'm going to be using negative 27. The tint is at uh, plus 73. The highlights and the whites at 5 and the, the saturation is all the way down to negative 70 because a negative 70 we are going to be desaturating or removing colors from the white area of the eye so get your zoom tool and uh, zoom into the eyes like that I get back to your uh, adjustment brush and just paint over uh, the white area of uh, the eye for the model so you can as well enhance the catch lights for uh, this model's eye so let's just paint over remember we are only whitening the white area of uh, the eye for uh, this model i think that is fine and looks beautiful so we can as well come and do the same for uh, and we can come and do the same for the teeth for this model so we can just come right here and come back to the adjustment brush and zoom into the teeth like that and we whiten them too so get your adjustment brush and just paint over so for this case we are only painting each and the individual tooth yeah each individual tooth separately because we wouldn't want paint on the gums because they are going to also be desaturated and they will look black and white so remember no one has black and white gums so that's why we have to be careful uh, when we are doing the teeth whitening for all our images so let's just paint over each and every tooth separately because uh, this is more of a gum look so uh, it depends on the look you're trying to go in for so let's just paint over a teeth so i'm just uh painting over each and every individual tooth i think we are done with that so let's zoom out and see the image right now so i think we're done with the color grading of this image so just click ok so you can see this is the before camera row after before after before after so this is how i do retouch uh using frequent separation for all my images in photoshop so let's uh, do a quick uh, review about all we did so this was our image before and we did frequent separation using the subbrush tool and the lasso tool method so you can see before and after then we did a uh, color grading using selective color then we created a stamp visible layer using a uh, shift alternate control E on the keyboard and we came to camera row and we did a little bit more of uh, color grading and eye and teeth whitening in Photoshop. So basically uh, uh, this is the image before, after, before, after. You can see how beautiful the image has turned out to be. So this story has been about frequent separation 
using the Mr. Brush tool and color grading and doing the eye and teeth whitening. I'm Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and supporting this channel. And I'll see you in yet another retouching tutorial. And don't forget to subscribe and drop a comment in the comment section. See you next time.